This is code.org. Let's see what we're working on, our list make app. And specifically, I want to start talking about this activity guide. Completing these really does help us lay out the process and what we need to do. So let's see what we have here. Try the app. Add several reminders. Scroll through the remi your reminders. Okay, so let me hit run. I can make that bigger. Perfect. Um, I'm going to add a reminder to be great. Boom. And vote. And, uh, oh, is it? Oh, it's still there. Got it. Eat good food, comma, tacos. I really like, I, I just like all food. Not all food. Not, never mind. I'm going to just sound worse. Uh, play video games. I have a really important life going on, guys. Don't grow up. All right, let's see. Boom. Cool. Okay. So how many lists do you think are needed? Ooh, that's a great question. So right now I have four things. One, two, three, four. All right. Scroll through your reminders. Got it. Oh, I can't go any farther. I'm at four. Okay. So let's see what else we have here. What programming patterns, what programming patterns with list do you think you'll need? Hmm. So this app uses one list. Give its name. Well, some patterns. I it looks like we're adding items, of course, and then we're adding them sequentially. So as the user adds them, and then how do I go through those items? What 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 am I doing to get to the next item? That might be a counter pattern, right? Um, I I don't believe it would be a loop. It would be an if statement. Maybe these are the types of things you want to be thinking about. Okay. This app uses one list, got it. Give it a name. What does it store? Um, I'm going to call it, and yours could be different, I don't know, remind list or reminders list. Or you could put user input list, anything really. So reminds, reminders list. And what does it store? Well, it stores the information the user is entering. So I would say something about that. It stores the reminder the person puts down, right? You just want to think what is actually on this screen. All right. This app uses one extra variable in addition to the list. What does it do? So an index. An index is the way we keep track of our location in a list, right? It's how we know where we are. And to prove this, I've just Googled it and I'm going to pull it over real quick. Boom. Indexing. An index is a numerical representation of an item's position in a sequence. So three is the third item. Or in programming, three is the fourth item. Zero is the first. Uh, it can refer to many things, items in a list, key value pairs, yada, yada, yada. So when you hear index, you want to think about your list and where we are at in it. How does it work? Okay, many App Lab projects run in the following way. The user is interested in seeing items in a list, like a list of foods, or a list of reminders. Okay, so we have a little list right here. The app shows the user one item in the list at a time. By clicking the buttons, the user can move back and forth through the list one at a time to see every item. So let me see. Index is zero. Oh, this should be a hint right here. What is the variable store? Okay, here's a list they used, banana, apple, pear, on event that the left button is clicked. So if I click the left button in this app, index is greater than zero. So only if index is greater than zero will let me subtract. And that would make sense, right? If I'm clicking left, you want to go this way, right? And to go this way, think of a number line, to go this way, you would be subtracting. Let's look at right button. So if I click on the right button, what do I check? If index is less than the list of the length, the length of my list minus one. We're doing minus one because once again, index values, they start at, I'm just going to write here, zero. So they start zero, one, two, three. So if you had a list of four things, right, I might say there's four items in a list, but in computer science, there are still four items, but the first one's at point zero, index zero, the second one's at index one, third one's at index two, fourth one is at index three. It's kind of weird like that. So it's saying, hey, is this index value less than the length of the list minus one? And we want it to be minus one because, for instance, this is a list of three things, but the only indexes that exist are zero, one, and two. So we want to make sure that the index is at most two, right? So even though the length would say three here, three minus one is two. And yeah, we want our index to be less than that. 
because we're going to add to it. So we want to make sure we don't go over the edge of the list. So if that's the case, we allow them to add one. Then we call update screen and the computer says, what the heck is that? Smack. And it's going to run whatever's in here. And what's this do? Well, let's set the property fruit label. So some label, we're changing the text. What are we going to change it to? We're going to say my list index. Okay, well, we just added one to index if we hit right button. So maybe we're now at index one because we started at zero. One plus uh, zero plus plus means plus plus means add one minus minus means subtract one. So we added one to zero. We're at one and then Apple would show up. Oh, let me get rid of this. Apple would show up in, uh, as the fruit label. Okay, what may be repeated in your app? What should be included in your functions? I would really pay attention up here, right? What are they using as a function here, it seems? What is being repeated? What are they calling multiple times? All right, now here, what are the inputs for this app? Inputs are any interaction you have. So doing this, I'm clicking a button, that's an input. I'm clicking a button, that's an input. Uh, it looks like they allow me to write and I can click add, right? So that's gonna be the type of input we are gonna be looking for. All will be turned into on events. Okay, so it's up to you. I would assume though, there's three of these. There might be four, I might be missing something. But yeah, it's how the user can interact and an event occurs when they do that. Notice the screen change when I do that? The screen changes when I do this. The screen changes here, right? So on events is what you're thinking about. Yep, and this is just gonna detail how to get started. So great, make sure you take your time on this. We're gonna build something really, really awesome.